Atrial fibrillation, also known as AFib, is a complicated condition with various causes. Blood pressure issues are just one of the risk factors associated with AFib. However, AFib can also cause changes in blood pressure, specifically leading to low blood pressure, also known as hypotension. It's important to be aware of this potential complication. Here's what you should keep in mind. There are two types of low blood pressure. Absolute low blood pressure. This is when your blood pressure is below 90 60th millimeter of mercury, even when you're resting. Orthostatic, or postural, low blood pressure. This is when your blood pressure drops within 3 minutes of standing up. It has to be at least 20 millimeters of mercury for systolic blood pressure and at least 10 millimeters of mercury for diastolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure, the top number, is the pressure of your heart when it's contracting. Diastolic blood pressure, the bottom number, is the pressure in your arteries between heartbeats. Hypotension can affect anyone, but it may not always cause symptoms, especially in young or active individuals. It's difficult to determine how many people have the condition as a result. Orthostatic hypotension seems to occur more frequently in older adults and becomes more common with age. Experts estimate that 5% of people aged 50 have it, and if you're over 70, that rate rises to 30%. But usually, it's the other way around when it comes to atrial fibrillation and low blood pressure. Atrial fibrillation causes the heart to beat irregularly, which can affect how well it pumps and trigger low blood pressure. Orthostatic hypotension, in particular, may be the cause of atrial fibrillation. Research shows that your risk of having atrial fibrillation increases by 40% when you have orthostatic hypotension. Symptoms of this type of hypotension include dizziness when standing, blurry vision, confusion, weakness, and fainting. Even if your symptoms are mild or brief, it's important to seek attention. Ongoing hypotension could indicate other underlying problems, so be sure to tell your doctor if you have any of these symptoms. If you have atrial fibrillation, the medications used to treat it can cause low blood pressure. Beta blockers are commonly prescribed to help control the heart rate and rhythm. Some examples of beta blockers include atenolol, tenormin, carvedilol, coreg, metaprolol, toprol XL, lopressor, and sotolol, beta pace. Another medication, verapamil, which is a calcium channel blocker, can also lead to low blood pressure. It's important to note that if you have both atrial fibrillation and pre-excitation, cardiologists do not recommend using verapamil, as it may speed up your heart rate and eventually cause low blood pressure. If your low blood pressure is caused by your atrial fibrillation, your doctor may adjust your medications or try a different one. It's important not to stop taking your pills without consulting your doctor. If you experience a sudden worsening of your atrial fibrillation symptoms with a heart rate above 120 beats per minute, it could result in low blood pressure. In this case, seek immediate medical attention by calling 911 or going to the nearest emergency room. You may receive medications to slow your heart rate and prevent clotting, as well as a procedure called electrical cardioversion to control your heart rhythm. The main treatments for low blood pressure associated with atrial fibrillation include raising your blood volume with intravenous fluids, plasma, or blood transfusions, taking medications that constrict your blood vessels, and using medications to help your kidneys retain fluid and salt. It's important to follow these steps to manage atrial fibrillation with low blood pressure. Take your prescribed medications as directed by your doctor. Wear compression socks to help improve blood flow. Avoid standing up too quickly to prevent dizziness or fainting. If you feel dizzy or faint, sit down and rest. Always be aware of signs that you may need emergency care. Call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room if you experience chest pain, pass out or faint, fall and hit your head, injure yourself after passing out. Also seek emergency help if you have symptoms of shock, such as feeling unusually cold, sweating, rapid breathing, a fast heart rate, bluish lips or fingernails.